I just realized. Okay, can we start that again just a little bit? Because I've just realized I wasn't recording the video. Jonathan, please kindly allow me to say that you are without a shadow of a doubt hang on if we wait out for the youtube algorithm when that eventually becomes a thing that we have to worry about <laughs> you're a dickhead <laughs> you could have sneezed first i would have definitely I bought, bought the algorithm with them out but hey it means that there's now no video evidence of us admitting to tax evasion jonathan <laughs> Oh. Actual dickhead. <laughs> right! Sorry. Back to the incredibly slick segue of Big Bad Grass Starters! Woo! Yes, everybody, we are back and we are talking more Pokemon bullshit. Uh, excuse me, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna see if I can adjust a piece of volume here. Who, mine or yours? Yours. You're actually too quiet. What? Don't make me scream, I have neighbors. Just scoot a little closer to your mic. Is that close enough, everybody? So close! Call a restraining order! <laughs> Press. Like. Spurts. If you are old enough <laughs> to get that reference, then you're old enough to be saddened by it. Why are you on this stream? Go and pay your taxes. Shut up! <laughs> you can't make us! If you are old enough to get that reference, then you are old enough to get our first entrance. Because we are ranking grass type starter pokemon this is going to be a little series of three uh, that we're going to do over the next couple of weeks we're going to start with grass then we'll do either water or fire and then we'll do either fire or water uh that's 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 that's, that's logic that is. see i'm logical oh very impressed by that yeah but if you were old enough to get uh chris's fucking salad fingers reference you were old enough to remember our first competitor, it is the OG, it is the frog who got off the log, it is Venusaur. Best bulb boy. Best and biggest bulb boy, because hey, fun fact, uh, this is the, like, for every other image that we bring up on, uh, uh, for, like, Bulbapedia reference, they're normally about the regular size of my screen. There's too much mon to be contained. It's just a chunk, boy! <laughs> Venusaur, who is just, I, I love Venusaur, this big, ugly, lumpy monstrosity. Fucking beautiful monstrosity? Look at that face! It is beautiful, but that's the thing! Like, all the designs, like, so many of the designs for, like, the Gen 1 Pokemon, a lot of them are actually kind of sleek. I mean, yeah. Whereas Venusaur don't give a sleep. fuck. I know, I think it's a pr I think, although, you know, maybe not, like, smooth and textured, like, you know, Pokemon has conditioned us to believe. Exactly. But, but like, setting it's a pretty, standards. I think that's a pretty sleek, smooth design. I think they were like, we're gonna make a dino frog plant, and they, you know, ran with it to the nth degree. No, no, they, I, I meant visually sleek. Like, they absolutely nailed the assignment, but the assignment was, we're gonna make a big boy, we're gonna make a Chunky boy, and we're gonna make a chunky boy with a tree coming out his butt. Yeah, big and gnarly, which is important. Exactly. The little one is tiny and cute. Venusaur is just a big, lumpy frog boy who wants to just sit in the sun and chill out, and I love him. I'd like to point out that, um, you know, when you, Gen 6, when you got to get, pick a Kanto starter for your, you know, yeah. Mega Evolution Fun. Mega Venusaur Earthquake is just everybody's idea of a good time. Because you just, you Mega, you go boom, and you just absorb damage like a wall. See, like, the thing. I love Venusaur it. has a long history of being able to just get broken. 
Yeah. Because in its original incarnation, you want to... Oh, you know... You yes, know I this. Do. Oh, dear. Venusaur had access to two particular moves, which stacked with Leech Seed yep. and Toxic. Yep. For those aficionados there, you all know this. Toxic that does like a little bit of damage. It's a, it hits them, it poisons somebody and then it does like more damage. Like the chunk the of damage, damage does just get bigger. Each time. So yeah. It starts at like, I think it starts at like either a 16th or a 32nd of your health and then it doubles each time. Yeah. Leech Seed does also a little bit of shit damage and restores your health. It's yeah, still, it it's still a but kind of a pretty dangerous combination. But, but it's, it's, yeah. It's not insane. It's thing that, yeah, but it's like in later editions, as everybody knows it, Leech Seed does a fixed amount of damage, restores a fixed amount of health. Yeah. When the two your Leech Seed is doing all that extra toxic damage and restoring your health more. Yep. Because what the fuck? Yep. You actual vampire demon frog dinosaur plant person. It's there, so broken. I will tell you, there is actually something of a spiritual successor to this in Gen 9. Uh, the Pokemon Arboliva. Arboliva Seed, Giga Drain, and has an ability called so It causes grassy terrain to appear. Which restores the who's touching the floor. Yes. Here's the great thing about grassy terrain. If you have a leech seed up, um, you're basically nullifying your opponent's health aid, gaining twice as much. That's nice to be Give fair. Give it a big root, and that thing is an act. In my I believe I go from nothing to full health in one turn. Just with brain, actually. See, this is... Because I, I mean, just I mean, want a giga drain, and I haven't... That does sound really cool. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, always my issue with Arboliva is that the normal grass typing combo. It's one, not a good typing. No, it's not a good typing. Most, I'd, basically every Pokemon that is just part normal as an extra addition, things like and Pyroar, Arboliva, the normal typing is so unnecessary. The only time it's good, and I hold to this, the only time that a normal... Nor adding normal as your second typing is great is normal ghost. Hisui and Zoroark. Yup. And no, I would argue that that's not actually like adding... Uh, I don't know. Ghost is weak to ghost. You have ghost just made yourself to yeah. immune to ghost. And fight normal, normal is weak to fight. Yeah, no, so you've just... you've. This is going to weakness the dark. Yeah. Basically, yeah, you've just nullified total immunity to one of Ghost's biggest problems. Yeah. And you've eliminated Normal's only weakness. Yeah, so it's like, you know... No, just... I'll, I'll, I'll agree. I'm, I, I would disagree with you slightly if it's on the whether or not it's just a Pokemon with Normal act on the side of it, so... Just because it's, it's an alternate form of, a, of an existing Pokemon, so it's like, the eh, argument's too bad. But that's like real I... fucking semantic nitpick bullshit. Yeah, that's I not think what we're here it's... to talk about. No, we're not. We're here to talk about grass. We're here to talk about grass. How grass be your ass. We really should have gotten Sorry. just extremely stoned for this. To be fair, when I shared the link on Facebook, I did say we talk about the weed Pokemon. So, we have our big favorite weed frog, um, who is always a good choice. Like, Bulbasaur is a great Pokemon. Ivysaur is just like a good little rowdy teenager. And then Venusaur is just... Venusaur is, will just charge into a riot, take 16 beanbags to the face, and still floor whatever poor police officer is in front of it. This is a very sound analogy, yes. Also, because, you know, Venusaur says fuck the police. Because Venusaur says fuck the police, because, hey, it's yeah. a grass Pokemon, therefore, it's an environmentalist. Is that racist for me to say that all grass Pokemon are environmentalists? No. It's like say. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it's like saying all women are feminists, but then I've seen Reddit. Uh, oh, Reddit! Yeah, there's some weird places in there. Uh, it's like it's. it's uh, I will never forget just the the Eliza Schlesinger bit of her just going, "Look, I'm a feminist. What else would I be?" <laughs> I mean, 
that's, that's, that's solid. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. Deep rooted. Not talk about deep rooted misogyny in in. Yeah, let's not talk about it. It's not. First, we're not the people to talk about it. No, we are not. We are not qualified. We are on Twitch. (laughs) Not qualified to talk about shit. But what we can talk about is Venusaur. I would like to hear some Venusaur. I'd love to hear some Venusaur stats. So Venusaur being the good boy that he'd be, um, and it is not sexist to say, as with all starters, infuriatingly and for game balance, is 87.5% male. How is that for game balance? Because, so you can't get eggs of your starters. Oh. That's why they do it. Yeah. And then they it's... realize Ditto can fuck anything. Not in every not in every generation, that's true. That's only, I up think, from... Up to Gen 4. No, Gen 3. I said up to Gen 4, Jay. Oh. If you get a ditto from Gen 3 or Gen 4, it, it will be that you like. And remember, because we tried to get a ditto from Gen 5, and it would only... It, it, it didn't work. It only worked with female Pokemon. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god, they made Ditto straight! They did make Ditto straight. Why? <laughs> because the straights are not okay. Jay. The straights That's are not okay. The they straights. took my little pansexual blob. Yeah, they took your pansexual blob and made him straight. That's just monster. I, 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 Pokemon. No, it should be treated as such. Yeah, I'm fucking right. Yeah. Venusaur! So, so, as with all. Venusaur what? Venusaur, please. Venusaur Mars. Fuck off. I'm gonna leave. (laughs) So. Some Venusaur stats, please. So, some Venusaur stats. So, Venusaur, being a big, strong boy, um. Now, tragically, because grass starters, grass starters all have the same ability, which is overgrow, well, which is garbage. Is is bitch basic and garbage? But well, what's hidden ability? His hidden ability is chlorophyll. Yeah. Thing, because you would expect Venusaur to be quite slow. Yeah. It's not. What? V- Venusaur has a base speed of eighty. Really? Yup. So actually, if you spec a speedy dinosaur on a sunny day, it suddenly has a base speed of 160, which is faster than, you know... Most things. The vast majority of shit that you come across. I think there's only, like, three Pokemon faster than that. One of them is Deoxys. Yeah! Deoxys, Ninjask, and I think Excel. Yeah, so, um... Speedy Venusaur is viable. I'm gonna make a fast frog. I'm gonna make a fast frog! And of course, the be- <laughs> because the best bit also, um, you know, for that is, you know, you one, you can fast frog, and two, because you know, speedy special attack, because special 100, so you can make it a fast special sweeper. Yeah, because it's special attack. Because it's special attack is bitching. Yes. Or... Because it's got base health of 80, base defense of 83, and base special defense of 100. You could make it speedy and bulky. You could do whatever you want with this frog. And it all works. I had not previously thought of making a speedy, chunky Venusaur on a sun team. And now I really, really want to do it. Because holy shit, that sounds terrifying. Yeah, it would be just about unkillable. Um, and that is because Venusaur, being a good little grass and poison boy, uh, only has four weaknesses. Flying, fire, psychic, and ice. And of those four, one of them is nullified in a sun team. <laughs> one of them is exasperated. Now, hopefully you deal with that. Yeah, like if you're so going to yeah. like if you're gonna, if you're gonna bring... 
If you are gonna bring a sun team, bring something ground move like Camerupt or Torkoal. Don't bring my cargo because my cargo sucks. Your cargo does this suck. Um, just bring something that's got a good ground move because you try. Because if you try and bring water, you're an idiot. I mean, I think usually the classic is like Mega Charizard Y and Earthquake. You know what you could do? We're gonna drop move. You could teach that Earthquake to Venusaur. Venusaur! Because Wait, no, Venusaur no. Venusaur learns Earthquake. Does Venusaur learn Earth power? Hmm? Does Venusaur learn Earth power? Uh, I think it can in some generations. Because Earth power is a special move. It is a special move. It doesn't hit everybody, but it is big. doesn't hit everybody, but you don't need to hit everybody unless someone's bringing it to fire types, which is unlikely. Unless you're also running a sun team. This is it. Let me have a look. Uh, you got Bulldoze, Stomping Tantrum, Earthquake. Yep, Earth Power. Um, sword and Shield, it is TR67. Yeah, you can teach it Earth Power. Yeah, teach it Earth Power. Uh, that's going to hurt. Oh, so, I'm, I think... We gotta, I, we gotta, we gotta rank this boy. I mean, I personally think that Venusaur, bearing all of that in mind, just as it's like current gen viability, not talking about you know gen six where it mega evolves and gets thick fat and suddenly it it's only got ice and f weaknesses. Yeah, yeah, it suddenly only got two weaknesses, five resistances, and is just great yep. as well as being tanky as balls. Yep. Um. By the way, for anyone who's interested. This is Mega Venusaur. He's just even more tree. It's just more tree. It's so much tree. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, no, Venusaur, Mega Venusaur are just, just an absolute delight. I would, personally, I would say that Venusaur is the complete package. And I would say that i I'm not gonna argue with you. For sheer power, versatility, and just bonkersness. Yeah. I think Venusaur belongs. Venusaur opens and closes S tier, just like this is my land. This is where Come at me. Yeah. It very much feels that way to me. I'm and like Now we have we must move on to the sequel. Now, a Pokemon that gets a lot of... A lot of stick. Unwarranted really stick. But I, I absolutely adore it's Meganium. I love the big potato. It's a big flowery potato dinosaur. Yeah. It's like, why do people hate on Meganium? Because its move pool is shit. Yeah, because Meganium's it... move pool... Meganium's move pool is crap. Yes. But it's so pretty. It's... And you just like... A huggable face. Yeah. Like that is a flower dinosaur that would be your best friend forever. Yeah. That's a nut. See that face? That's a nuzzling face right there. That's a face that will nuzzle you. I also, you know, as a just as a just general, I personally think that Bayleaf, the previous evolution in its chain, is like you know top tier Pokemon design. Yeah. I fucking love Bayleaf. Bayleaf design. and Chikorita both. Yeah. It's, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. Yeah. And I, again, conceptually, because you move, in terms of power, you're moving from Razor Leaf up to Petal Dance, so it loses the Razor Leaf on its top for the for the, the flower necklace in the final evolution. So it's like, it makes sense conceptually. It's got a really strong design philosophy. Yeah, no, like, Meganium's design, despite being extremely simple, is really strong. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a but big fan of it. But then they went for that for like all three of the Johto starters. They yeah. went for like simple, strong design. Like the most complicated of them is Feraligator, and Feraligator is not really complicated to me. It's, no, it's just a big crocodile. It's a big crocodile with some armor plates on it. Yeah. And a mohawk. Yes. Um, we love the mohawk. No, nah, we. I fucking love Meganium. I, <laughs> we love Meganium here on this channel. It is a wonderful Pokemon. It is personally... Okay, I was going to say personally it is my favourite out of the, the Gen 2 starters, but it's a it's a real toss-up for me between Meganium and Feraligator. But this is the thing. It's I'm a like, big I, hockey boy. Yeah, I'm like, you know, I have various opinions, but Gen 2 starters, Gen 2 being my fa personal favourite generation, 
I love all three of them. I have happily run yeah. teams with all three of them. I am always like, I don't know which one to pick. I, it's They're all great, and I love them all. But this is where we start to get into the... Get into the, facts. the meta. The, the facts problems. and the meta that don't care about our feelings. They don't. Because Would you like to... Objectively speaking, of the three, Meganium is the worst. Tragically. Yes. Tragically. However, it is five foot eleven, so it may be the tallest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. For all it's pretty big. No, it's a five foot eleven. It's slightly taller than Charizard. <laughs> That and that I will take. <laughs> I will absolutely take that. Cause Charizard's like five. Six, I think it's five eight. But like, yeah, Meganium is taller than Charizard. Yep. Stick that in your big stupid dragon and smoke it. Yeah, it's it's all. Oh, it will never not make me happy that Charizard yeah. is a short arse. <laughs> um, it's it's just wonderful. Now, Don't would you like to hear some Meganium stats? Hit me. So, Meganium is a pure grass type with overgrow, and um, its hidden ability, prepare to be underwhelmed, is Leaf Guard. What does Leaf Guard do again? Leaf Guard in sunshine prevents status effects. Okay, that's... Honestly, I might take that over Chlorophyll. I wouldn't, because it's a grass type and a sun team. But, let's go for further comparison with Venusaur. Bearing in mind they've both got roughly the same stat total. Yeah. And they both have the same base speed. Yeah. Um, so they both have 80 base speed, so neither of them are fast. They both have the same base health, 80. Meganium has slightly higher attack at 82. Considerably, or sorry, slightly lower special attack at 83. And an even hundred for defense and special defense. So Meganium's got some chunk to it. It's got some bulk. It's, yeah, it's it's like it's built specifically for bulk, and it doesn't mind if you want to go physical or special for its thing. And it's it's not willing to sacrifice speed, so it'll always be like a median speed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like yeah, it's it's a it's yeah, it's like a comfy kind of you know, you always have options, jack of all trades type deal. However, as a single type instead of a dual type, instead of having four weaknesses, it has five. And instead of five having five resistances, it has four. It loses the poison resistance and gains it as a weakness. Yup. Yeah, gra grass as a typing has a lot of problems. It really does. And it, I do think it's unfair because obviously, you know, starter types of grass, water, and fire... And neither water nor fire have as many weaknesses as grass does. Yeah, because water... water... Water's obscene. Water has two weaknesses. Yeah, water is weak to grass and electric. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Fire is weak to water, rock, and ground. Yeah. Yeesh. Grass is like flying, poison, bug, fire, ice. Maybe if you add some more, I might be afraid of them too. This is hard. Yeah. But I suppose the trade-off is that, you know, Flamethrower, you know, can suck a dick because we get Petal Dance. We get Petal Dance. Bitching. Yeah, that's the thing. Meganium doesn't necessarily have, like, great move pool. That's kind of its problem. It, yes, it has a very limited move pool. Yeah. It basically gets grass moves, normal moves, and that's it. Like, and... To, to reflect this point, I would say, if you think of most grass starters, a lot of grass Pokemon, a lot of bug Pokemon as well, that learn, you know, like, status moves, there's a lot of grass type Pokemon's kind of, you know, like, bread and butter. Yeah. Venusaur, absolutely, you know, heavy status effect kind of dude. Meganium gets poison powder. It's not great. But that's it, that's your only debuff. Really, that's your only that's your only status effect inflicting move. Yeah. Like your you kind know. of your status moves are poison powder as an offense and synthesis. Well, it uh, it also goes for reflect and light screen, although hilariously, looking at this just now, um you know, they learn them twenty two levels apart. 
Yeah. <laughs> Which is just really funny to me. But again, safeguard aromatherapy. It's it's kind of meant to be. I think it's meant to be like utility support only. Yeah. But it's just it's not it's not well built for that. Meganium is never meant to be. Meganium is not meant to be the main character, and I think it's okay with that. I mean, it may be, but I am sad about it. I, you can be sad about that, but like, yeah, Meganium. I, like Meganium, I think Meganium as a vibe kind of gives off the kind of person who is just who is always like happy for other people to take the stand and is just so proud of them when they are the ones in charge. But so I, I love Meganium's I, supportive I, attitude, but I don't think I can give it a high rank. No, no, we can't. And also, just you know, scrolling down, it's it's current, so it's Gen. I know it's Gen Eight move pool. So looking at its Gen Eight move pool, yeah, because it's not it's not available in Gen Nine. Uh, I don't Sad. think. Yeah, it's not. No, it's not. Um, I don't think it will. Like, be. No, it. <laughs> Dexter. Um, looking at its Gen Eight move pool, um. It's offensive abilities out with grass. Um, it can learn some ground type moves, in fairness. It can learn Earthquake um, and Bulldoze. So, you know, that's that's not terrible. It can learn Rock Smash um, and it can learn Iron Tail. And it learns Body Slam as well, doesn't it? It learns Body Slam naturally. I yeah. Think. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so it learns Body Slam naturally, but that's, you know, that's like. That's why I said normal and grass. I'm like, yeah. it's, it's only offensive types. Um, although you can also um, learn ancient power via egg. As an egg move. Egg. Eggy. Egg. Egg. Which I just... <laughs> what I find really funny, though, is that it gets those eggs either from Tangrowth, Rampardos, or Bastodon. So it's got yeah. a bugger, a bush, or a dinosaur. Well, it's because it's because it's um, no, no, a, yeah, bugger, a bush, or two options of dinosaurs because that uh, it's in monster and grass egg groups. Fair. So just yeah, it's 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 an exciting time to be. It is. I like I again. I really like Meganium, and both Chris and I are big fans of Meganium. And you're right. Like every time that we have to. Uh, you know that we have to choose which um every time we have to choose which starter to choose for from the gen 2 batch it really is a toss-up and usually i base it on kind of like whatever one i trained last i try, yeah. I try and pick one of the other two or like That's whoever fair. i haven't trained in the longest but meganium is If I had to choose one of them in a pinch to bring out in a fight, it would probably be for Alligator and not Meganium. And my problem is that mine would probably be Typhlosion, which is not fair. Yeah. Yeah. But I will always love that Typhlosion learns Thunder Punch. It can be taught Thunder Punch, so fuck you for Alligator. I win! I mean, for, Al for Alligator learns all the fangs! That is fair, actually. It now learns all the fangs. So, um, for alligator can kill other can kill other water types as well. Yay! Yeah. Um, but yes, I so meganium. Or do you speak meganium? I don't want to put it at the bottom. I don't think we can't put it in F. It does not belong in F. But maybe in D. I was thinking C. I think it's below average. And C is the average, so I think it may have to go in D. Yeah. Just in terms of its stats, very much lock it into one thing, and that thing is something it's not particularly good at. You're an A tier in our hearts, Meganium. Yeah. But now we move over to something a little, little less, a uh, little less chunky. As we bring out something, a new direction for grass types. A little less wooden wall, a little more cutting-edge leaf 
It is. You mean when grass types got edgy? <laughs> when grass types got edgy, it is septile. Yeah. To be fair, I I love this whole line. I think all of them. Right. I think. Here's wise. the thing. I'm gonna and I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop a fucking bomb on you. Go on. Because I love I love the Gen Three starters. It is a well documented fact that both Chris and I massive Gen Three fans. It's where we started. It's great shit. Yo. Septile is the worst Gen 3 starter. Uh, Especially in Gen 3. Okay, this... Maybe. Maybe. I will grant you maybe. And I have one particular reason for feeling that. I'm curious what yours is. Because I've trained a Septile very recently mm. in a Gen 3 hack. And... I have trained, I've trained a couple of septiles across my time in Gen 3 environments. So I'm not quite sure how they measure up later. That's a very important point. Fair. Septiles move variety is crap. To the point where I came out, I was running up to the Elite Four and my septile still knew Pound because I hadn't found anything that was better. May. May! Come on, even in like, you know, OG, like, Ruby and Sapphire days, I never had that problem. Admittedly, I, it's because I don't like doubling up on types of moves, so I was like, why, why would I have Absorb when I have Leaf Blade? Because also it doesn't do well with draining, because its special attack is not great. Well, actually, and this is the thing, my reason for disliking Sceptile in Gen... Three. Well, actually, Gen 3, like, Ruby and Sapphire, fine, because all grass moves were special. As mm. soon as you move into Separated Church and State... Yes, as John, as, that's as a start. whole different story. Well, that's the thing, because Sceptile's base special attack is 105. His base physical attack is 85. Oh, oh. So, Leaf Blade, its signature badass move with the high crit rate is now less good than Giga Drain. And see, that's the thing, is like, Sceptile didn't really have a lot of interesting move choice. You could really give it in Gen 3. It, its big thing was having Leaf Blade. Its big thing was, was having Leaf Blade, and beyond that, it kind of felt lacking. But Leaf Blade was also bitching. But Leaf Blade was also bitching. Like, I'll give you that, but... Yeah, so you would, yeah. It oh, felt that's... a lot more one trick than the other two. I, yes, no, I will grant you that. Um, let me just actually pull up its Gen 3. I think having... Set. I think maybe it being a monotype, whereas the other two are dual types, might have something See, to do with that. Because Blaziken, as the first firefighting... Actually, the first firefighting type... Yeah. Has that... Blaziken had a great variety of moves. Even in Gen 3, you had yeah. you had fire moves to move, you had blaze kick, you had flamethrower, you had fighting moves, you had things like double kick or sky uppercut. And yep. you had actually a weird, surprising amount of flying moves. Well, mostly peck, but yeah, no, you could certainly. You could also learn aerial ace. Well. Yes, you could. You could teach it aerial ace. Yeah, and Swampert um, had the whole water ground thing going for it, which, a, which apart from its four times weakness to water, is a fucking great typing. Well, that's because its four times weakness to water is its own or to grass. Sorry, is its only weakness. Exactly. Yeah, it's a bitch in typing. It's a bitch in typing, and frankly, <sighs> if they had given. The ability of Sap Sipper as its as its as its mega ability, then it would have been the greatest, the most deadly Pokemon of all time. It literally would have been unkillable. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and let me let me let me hold up some let me hold up some some you know thing for Sceptile because I think that although Sceptile um, Gen Three you know isn't stellar, you've got. Um, Absorb, obviously, is its first grass move, but also, and Quick Attack, which is, you know, fairly viable to late game in Gen 3. Yeah. Um, Fury Cutter at an early level, which yeah. is good. Well, for, given, you know, bug moves, is good. And it's still, and even at, at that time, point, you know, yes. It doubled in power every move, every turn. So, you know, so it was never dreadful, obviously, you know, and not brilliant. Um, Pursuit which was good, and Screech, which meant, you know, that all of the pr the previous, well, not Pursuit, 
but Fury Cutter and Quick Attack suddenly become real viable with Screech. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, you know, we get into Leaf Blade. The, the one thing I always hated about it was that its last move was False Swipe. Like, False Swipe is a good move, but it's only a good move for catching Pokemon. Yeah. And it's like, give, putting it as, as, you know, giving that the move at level 59 just kind of feels like, okay, you completed the, the game now, you should go and go, that's the hint, you should now go and fill up the Pokedex. Yeah. Go and be but... busy. Still, yeah, yeah. yeah no, yeah. I'm, I'm not cool with it. And especially since the previous two moves were detect and slam, and slam is an objectively bad move. Slam is crap. Yes, but that's kind of the things I'm talking about. Yeah, no, and, and I'll grant you, I'll grant you. And actually, however, though, you know, in its defence, I realised what I've previously been saying was also in theory in its defence. Really good TM pool. Yeah, it's got a good TM pool. I'll give you that. Yeah. Hey, right. Dragon Claw, Toxic Bullet Seed, um, Gear Drain, Solar Beam, Frustration, Iron Tail, Earthquake. Don't like the Gig you have to Giga Drain. Yeah, no, that's that's kind of garbage. The fact that Gig because Giga Drain is at that point kind of the best reliable grass move because Solar Beam yeah. takes that setup. Yeah, no, that's true. Although, Gen 3 is when we have abilities. So, Route becomes a thing. True. Although only with, um, only, only yeah, with Yeah, only Groudon. with Groudon. Yeah. We didn't have that yet. No. Speaking of which, what is Sceptile's hidden ability? Sceptile's hidden ability, I am actually super in favour of. Especially given what we've just discussed about Solar Beam. Uh, hidden ability Unburden. Oh, okay. Unburden's really good. Uh, Unburden doubles your speed whenever you lose your held item. Which traditionally is used with an item called Power Herb, which is basically if you're using a move that takes two turns, it takes one turn. Yeah, but it gets consumed. Yeah, which yeah. means that Unburden procs, which means suddenly your yeah. speed doubles. Yeah, that's really good, because Sceptile's no slouch when it comes to speed. Sceptile's base speed is 120, Jay. Okay, I didn't realize it was that fast. Yeah, oh no, Sceptile goes hard. All right, 120 base speed, 105 special attack, 85 attack, and then defense is 65, def special defense is 85, health is 70. It's like what I'm here to do is kill you very quickly it is and your, then leave. Yeah, it is your quintessential fast special sweeper. Mm. Yeah, no, like, here's the thing. I said Sceptile was the worst Gen 3 starter. I will stand by that statement. However, yeah doesn't change the fact that I fucking love Sceptile. Yeah, it's like, it's like being... <laughs> what, what's, it's what's like my, being... What's my comparison here? Neapolitan... Being the worst flavor of Neapolitan ice cream. Yeah. It's only Sceptile... vanilla because the other two are so good. Yeah, Sceptile is the strawberry, is the strawberry of vanilla, of uh, Neapolitan ice cream. It's still fucking <laughs> good because it's good ice cream, but the vanilla and the chocolate are better because... Uh, Oh, interesting. This is a... Uh... Oh, no, that's... All right. Um, and also, like, although the Mega Evolution is not necessarily a good typing, it is an interesting typing. Yeah, Grass and Dragon. With Lightning Rod as its ability. Yeah, which is weird, and I like it, but also, huh? Yeah, yeah it's very strange. I also, also like the fact that it's a killer Christmas tree. Yes, it's a killer Christmas tree that also goes again hard because it goes up to 145 base speed yeah you, you're not catching this special thing. attack yeah you're not catching this thing he's just a a billion miles a minute but it's just like but it's, i think the fact that if you've got unburden as your hidden ability yeah. right is it 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 gives a lot more option for like everything because realistically you could not spec into speed at all and still make it viable yeah because all you need to do is go hardcore into special attack and health if you wanted to. This thing. Remember when and I made that Holucha? Yes. Yeah. Your unburdened Holucha was disgusting. Yeah. It was like, I'm going to make the most terrifying... Because there was like Sky Attack, Sky Attack with Power Herb, Unburden, and Acrobatics, and Drain yeah. Punch. It's, it's repulsive. Yeah. Actually grotesque. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, you're not catching that thing. It's fast. Yeah. But like, and it's, again, you could do with Sceptile because you can spec it into, and you, you know, 
Ideally, you probably spec it into special attack, but you could spec it into attack if you wanted. You could spec it into health, so suddenly it can take a whole bunch of hits. You just unburden your speed doubles, and suddenly you have a base speed of 240, which, with no effort at all, again, outpaces almost everything in the game. Yeah, it's competitive as fuck. So it's like, it's, it's yeah, it's super good. Um, And also, in later generations, its move pool becomes considerably better. That's the thing. It needed the move pool. Yeah. Because it didn't have that in Gen 3. No. Although, also, you want to know what it can learn by TM in Gen 8? Do tell. Thunder Punch. Reptile Thunder Punch! Yeah, yeah, baby! Also, Drain Punch, by the way. Just if you Hell want to yeah. run that Holucha strat. Drain Punch is such a good move. I had forgotten the Gen 8 made or Gen 8 made fucking cross poison a TM. Holy fuck. Oh fuck it made cross poison a TM? Yeah. Like, okay. We have That's our problems grotesque. with Gen We have our problems with Gen 8, but it did some fun things to moves. Like yeah, genuinely. It, I think it one opened of the, the move pool of everybody way the fuck up, which is great. One of the best things I think they did in Gen 8 was the fact that they made Leech Life 80 power. <laughs> I loved that. Because that was just like, oh, there's the wor the shittest draining move. The worst fucking draining move that exists is suddenly really fucking dangerous. And All in the, the hands, bugs went, hey -o! And in the hands of level three Zubats. I know. It's and suddenly great. Crobat is immortal. Crobat is so good. Because now Crobat has an 80 power health drain move. That's bug, so it kills all the psychic types that come near. Exactly. Like Cro it's so good. Crobat doesn't have to dig into it. Doesn't have to rely on night slash to fucking survive psychic types, because it can uh, just eat them. Yes, we love this. So that being the case, I feel like to judge it. I think Septile has to go above Meganium at the very least. But oh, I don't, definitely. I don't think I can put Septile in, in A tier. No, no, I don't. I think it's... I think well, looking at B. Do we die? Yeah. Okay. Because here's the thing. Septile's move pool does open the fuck up, and it does have a lot of power behind it. Mm. But I think on this scale of grass types, it doesn't have that sheer level of variety that Venusaur has. It's... I like think a... Unburden opens it up a lot. I think having that as a hidden ability gives it much more potential for variety. True. And I, but I do think that I agree that it kind of is designed to do one thing. That yeah. its main its main thing is one thing. Yeah. But and the it, difference between but I do it think and it does that one thing pretty fucking well. And that's the thing. The difference between it and Meganium is it is it is still kind of a one trick pony, mm. but it's a fuckload better at that trick. Yeah. So, so you I want to put it in B. I want to put it in high B. Okay. Like with a, I'm I'm gonna say high B with a provision of potentially moving it up later. Yeah, I'll give you that. I will absolutely give you that if we. Thank like, you. If we start judging it, can learn every... acrobatics, Jay. What? It can learn acrobatics by TM. Okay, it's going in A tier. Also, dragon dance. Okay. Okay. No, acrobatics, dragon dance, drain punch, drag. I know it can learn dragon claw. Yeah. I mean, I would I would go less heavy on Dragon Claw and heavier again on you know, like fucking um, so no, X sure Scissor and fucking um, Leech Blade or Leaf Blade. I'm pretty sure it can learn. I'm actually, I'm pretty sure it can learn Dragon Pulse as well. I think it can. Yes. Actually, I think I think actually with that sheer variety of moves, that might push Septile up to A tier. Again, that is as of Gen Eight. That is as of Gen Eight, but that's the world we're living in. It is the world we're living in. Yes. I'm just looking at it down at its um, down at its uh, egg moves actually just now. Um, double kick, night slash. Okay. Um, I would still spec this thing more towards special attack than it would physical attack. Yeah, but yeah. But I like that you can get it at leech seed. Crunch. Yeah. Um, we do like crunch. We do like crunch. Not in video games though. Not in video game development. Yeah. I like it my chocolate bars, not my game development. Oh, fuck's sake. What? Ah. Uh, um, you want to know what totally useless fucking move 
it can learn by tutoring in um Right, only in the Sword and Shield ex Shield expansion pass, right? Only in the only there. What scale can it learn? Shot. What? Scale shot. Scale shot? The unique move of Goddamn Como? Thanks. No. Let me double check. No, it's not the unique move of Como. You do Como's move is clanging scales. Uh Dragon type multi strike move introduced in Gen 8. Uh Learn. I'm saying <laughs> it's. You know, no. Actually, you want to know what's even funnier? Um, it's a. So it's it's a, it's a tutor only move. So yeah, no, I got it wrong. Mister mixed up with clanging scales. It's a tutor only move introduced in Gen Eight as part of the expansion pass. But in Gen Nine, it is the signature move of. Roaring Moon, which is our Salamence. Salamence ancestor Pokemon. Which is so dumb that you introduce a move only for it to be the signature move of a Pokemon in the next generation. That's also not the first time that's happened, I don't think. It probably isn't, but it's real dumb. Yeah, but I... also Roaring Moon is a fucking beast. It is. It's terrifying. But is it... Sceptile... We think Sep we were you happy to push Septile up into A when this is where I feel it belongs. I think I can push Septile up into A. Kay. Just just And yeah. I do think it's I do think that it is because actually what it does, it does do super well. And it does have a huge amount of variety. Yes. And that was one of the things I was kinda of saying. Yeah about before so yeah i think it's something that was a big issue in gen 3 when it first came out but has been rectified since okay so that's how you get to climb up the tree to to eight here yes hey marlene and yes yes hey you shoot your scales let's shoot on your scales hello marlene you're new oh dear you new. Welcome. hello welcome to the welcome to our bullshit indeed we we shoot in scales on grass types. It's a happy day. I think that's a. I think that counts as ecological vandalism. It probably does. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Now, speaking of ecological vandalism, <laughs> let's Half bring up. Trees! Let's bring up the ecology that will vandalize you. It is probably one of my favorite grass types ever. He big. He chunky. He a whole ass motherfucking tree. It is Tor goddamn Terra. Star of Detective Pikachu when the entire, like, planet shifted. <laughs> yeah, when it turns out there's, like, an entire fucking forest made of these things. Because look at that boy! Is that look at that! that! That, that boy, that boy, I'm just saying, that happens to, happens to also realistically be one of the fucking, um, island turtles from Avatar. It Just so is. It, it so, so is. is. Like, I love Torterra. I fucking love Torterra. Like, the Gen 4 starters are a little bit less great across the board, but that's just because Infernape can go cry in a corner. Yes. Uh, but Torterra and Empoleon are both fan-fucking-tastic, but I will pick Torterra every single goddamn time. See, I... I stand Empoleon hard, and I desperately think that Empoleon should learn Drill Run, naturally, as well as Drill Peck. It should, and it should. However, I cannot argue with the fact that Torterra is a stronger typing as a grass ground type. Thank you. Torterra is a beast. A beast? Yeah. Also, uh... also, sorry, so let's, just, let's, let's, let's do this game. Having established... Meganium as a handy 5'11". Yep. How tall do you think Torterra is, including tree? Not as tall as you think, but I'm still going to say about 7 foot. 7 foot and 3 inches. 7 foot 3 inches. Because the thing is, I I want this to be so much bigger than it is, but Pokemon has its limits. It does, tragically. It's uh, limits as Waylord. Yeah, it's, 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 it's limit as Waylord. It's a literal fucking whale. I would like to point out, though, Torterra is exactly. listed as the continent Pokemon. Yeah. Torterra is 
Yo, Goth it's, Girl. Good to see you. Tor Torterra is the best. It's, I love it. It is big, it is heavy, it is chunky, it has... It is a beast when it comes to its stats and its moves. And it has a really good grass ground typing. Yep. Uh, also, it evolves from a really, really adorable Turtwig. Who's just a little, little, little turtle boy with a little sprout on his head. And, he's cute. It's a and then he turns into this turtle. behemoth. Yep. Like, it's pretty great. Torterra are off when they are grouped together, they are often thought of as walking forests. So do you know what this thing is? What? That's the turtle that killed Macbeth. <laughs> you know what? Fair. When Viridian Forest walks to the name. <laughs> I don't want to write that. <laughs> let's do, let's do Shakespeare and Pokemon because fucking Shakespeare, Shakespeare open source and Nintendo will sue us into the ground. Yay! Woo! <laughs> Joke's on them. We have no money. Nice. Now we're back to that paying taxes thing again, Jay. Shh, Torterra doesn't pay taxes. Torterra's a fucking tree. <laughs> That's the real. That's the real secret of this stream. Don't pay taxes. Become true. <laughs> oh my god, it's right. amazing. Um, Shall we talk about stats? Yeah. Okay. So for a start, Torterra's hidden ability is shell armor, mm. which blocks critical hits. Yeah, that's so good. It's pretty solid. It's like a good. Non specialized, like solid. It's a good solid general ability. ability, and it means that you're not going to suddenly get surprised out of the ass. Yup. Um, now, much as I very much enjoy the grass ground move pool uh, or grass ground typing, it does come with some uh, drawbacks. Yes. Which is a times four weakness to ice. Yeah. Uh, you know, along with still being weak to flying bug and fire. And it's only got two resistances. However, Immune to electric. Immune to electric? That's not the point I was going to raise. What's the point? The whole point of starter Pokemon is that they operate in a triangle. True. Torterra defies that triangle. It does, yes. Because Torterra is not weak to fire. Nope. Torterra... Mm. <laughs> Torterra eats fucking Infernape for breakfast. Yeah. Torterra eats Infernape for breakfast. Stomps on the remains. Yeah. And let, also, it, but that it would also be defies Empoleon's attempts to resist grass. It does! <sighs> Torterra is an absolute beast, but in the great pantheon of how the uh, of how the grass types would behave, Torterra is the big guy. Like, Tor I can imagine that Torterra and Venusaur would just, like, flop down next to each other and just have a big snooze while everyone else is on their backs. Yes. Which is a great image and is filled with wholesome. Yeah. Except for Meganium. Meganium would also be like curled up between them. Yeah. Just enjoying the sunshine. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Or, and except Rillaboom because Rillaboom can fuck off. <laughs> we we'll haven't got to, to that yet, Jay. We will get to that, but I couldn't resist the urge to tell Rillaboom to fuck off because, hey, Rillaboom, fuck off. So much for so much for unbiased. Since when were we that? <laughs> I don't know. We've never been that. We've never been unbiased. I mean, this is true. This is very true. Fuck are you talking about unbiased. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, there we go. Um. Anyway, well, stats. We're talking stats. We're talking stats. We're talking stats. So, as expected, Torterra is a chunky boy. With a solid 95 health, 105 defense, 85 special defense. So it's, it's pretty chunky. Um, 56 base speed. So it's also like settling down into, you know, it's like we're, we're, we were never here to outspeed people. We're just here to take the hits and keep thumping back. Yeah. Also, unusual for grass type, uh, special attack is only 75. No, so there is a much more, is much more physical focus. Yep, because attack is 109. 
Yeah, because it leans a lot more on its ground typing for that. But also, it's yeah. from Gen 4, the generation that introduced <gasps> a wood hammer. It was indeed, especially since we now have physical and special moves split. Separation of church and state! Motherfucker. Woo! Also, again, you know, Razor Leaf is a physical move. And Razor Leaf is a physical move, so yeah. It's like, it's a happy, happy time to be oh. a Torterra. Yeah. Because you got Razor Leaf. You, although, I will say, mm -hmm. the one downside to this, Torterra's top level move... Leaf Storm. Leaf Storm's a special move, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, is Frenzy a, Plant. It was a bad fucking call. Yeah. It's last, like, legit, as I'm looking for uh, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. Uh, level 51 Giga Drain, 57 Leaf. It's his last two moves. Yeah, his last two moves are not great for it. No, but you get... As you evolve, you can relearn Woodhammer. Yeah, and Woodhammer is... So you is... never needed Leafstorm to begin with. Never needed Leafstorm because you got the Woodhammer. Because fuck it. Why would you throw people... Why would you throw leaves at people when you can just hit them with a fucking tree? Yeah. Tree hammer! <laughs> tree hammer. That's the one. That's, I, I'm going to make a barbarian who swings a tree around. Excellent. To be fair, I have already got a paladin that has smited with trees. To be fair, yeah, like, that was the, the opening move. <laughs> you just picked up a fucking tree and smashed a llama in the face with it. Yeah. Twice. Yes, yes. I would like to say, you know, slight D&D &D tangent. Goliaths are a great race. Yeah. You get a tight you get you get you get a, a damage resistance. You get to treat yourself as a size up from what you are. It's so good. And you get a little damage reduction that's actually pretty fucking good. It's solid. Like What's it's clutch. Damage reduction? It's very clutch. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, Goliaths are great. You just gotta however the one downside is you gotta put up with the how's the weather up there jokes from every single goblin you meet. We haven't met a lot of goblins. And the only one who has is drunk you under the table and uh, blown shit up. This is true. He's great. Yeah. All the others just, you know, having rights. I know. Goddamn goblins and their demands for having rights. Goblins <laughs> should get the vote. <laughs> Living wage for goblins. Living wage for goblins. Uh, it's funny because it's What's true. What's my... The tree wasn't my exclusive weapon. It just... Happened to be one I ripped out of the ground and hit people with. Yeah. It's you know? just it was just a handy tree. I think I think I used the Minotaur more often than I used the tree. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Anyway, Torterra. Anyway, back to trees. <laughs> back to back to our favorite trees that don't well they do smite you, but you know. Um, less holy way. Yeah. Torterra is interesting. Because, again, it's Gen 8 not available in Gen 9. Um, so you would think that really opens up its move pool. However, yeah. it's only available in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl and Legends of Arceus. It's not ah. able to be transferred over to Sword and Shield. So actually... Fuck, I want an Alpha Torterra. Yeah, I know, right? His, tr his TM pool is actually significantly reduced. Ah. So it does, ha it does have... <clears throat> it does have some solid variety. Um, in that, from Legends of Arceus, for instance, you can get uh, Iron Head, Iron Tail, Outrage. Oh, fuck! <laughs> Rock Slide, Stone Edge. You know, like, that's pretty solid. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry, outrage? <laughs> outrage, yeah, you can Outrage. Your, you can have your land <laughs> turtle dragon thing. Yes, yes, you can. Um, I'm a turtle. Also, uh, you know, just if for, for less exciting things, if you ever feel like being less exciting than outrage, um, for, as an egg move, you can have superpower. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> yeah. And thrash. <laughs> and heavy slam. And... Seed Bomb, if you just felt like you needed more hefty physical grass moves. Yeah, because seed, seed Bomb is great. Yeah, and Double Edge, which is underrated for its usefulness at times. Yeah, but I would still t I would take Wood Hammer over Double Edge just because of the, the stab. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, it's got, it, it can go hardcore. But the other important thing, I think, <clears throat> that is, you know, is missed 
when looking at, you know, what one does with a Torterra, is that because it is ground type... One carefully prunes it, because then it can grow properly. This is very true. You need to carefully prune your Torterras. Yeah, although very be wary, it is like it will be like clipping the claws of a seven-foot-tall cat. It will try and shake you off. I was going to say that one of Torterra's real strengths uh, as as a wall, because it's a wall with a big chunky beat stick, uh, is it learns curse. Yes. <laughs> and leech seed. Yep. And synthesis. Yep. And if you didn't want to go down the synthesis route, uh, you can also have it, you know... As a sand team. Yeah, Parker. Yeah, because Sandstorm, Stealth Rock as a TM, um, Sand Tomb as a, and, and Earth Power, if you wanted to make it special for some reason. Um, yeah, Earthquake. As egg moves. Yeah. Um, so, Leech yeah, Seed. I... So imagine that, okay, so you have a Sandstorm team, but in that Sandstorm team, you have something using Leech Seed. Yeah. Just to chip damage anything out of fucking existence. So Stealth Rock, Leech Seed, Earthquake, and... And Sand Tomb. No, maybe but, not Sand Tomb, but... I'm just like, that's just, you know, like, if you were gonna make... If, if I were going to If you are gonna make the king of chip damage. Yeah, if I were gonna go opening round Sand Team with this as my one. I would probably get. I would probably throw it in with maybe something like a Mega Aerodactyl or just like a, you know, like something. Something that's going to be fast. And airborne. And airborne. So I've got, you know, like I'd maybe take a turn. Honestly, man. You know, hmm? High power Staraptor with uh, powder with um, goggles. I'd rather do the Aerodactyl and give it Focus Sash. Okay. Because then you can definitely take the turn for Sandstorm and. Um, Stealth Rock, and then the next turn, you got Aerodactyl and an Earthquake from Torterra to just definitely mean that Stealth Rock's gonna proc next turn. At least once. At and least then, once. Hopefully twice. And then if your opponent sends out a tank, they get chipped away at Sandstorm, and you leech seed them, which brings your Torterra back up, and they just yep. chip, 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 chip. Because here's the thing: stacking chip damage in Pokemon is still fucking terrifying because one thing it's I did very viable yeah one thing I did uh, quite recently in my Scarlet my uh, playthrough mm. was I was facing something that was way fucking higher level than me I can't remember in what context I think it might have been a gym or mm. it was either a gym or uh, one of the team star bosses and their star mobile mm. So uh, I managed to poison them with my Grafiae. Mm. And then hit them with Salt Cure from my Garganacle. Yep. Just fucking ate them up. Yeah, because realistically at that point you're doing an eighth of their health every turn. Yeah. Um, this is before my, I believe, a new Leech Seed. So. Yeah. Like, if you could stack chip damage of any kind. Like, if. Here's the thing. If you could get. Sandstorm, Leech Seed, and Toxic going from this yeah. Torterra on like anything. It, you're going to eat its health immediately. Yeah, it's like, you're not, you know, it's not the broken kind of stacking that occurred from, you know, glitches in Gen 1 with Venusaur. Yeah. Where, lit like, where, you know, Leech Seed would literally give you more health because your opponent was poisoned. But it's still lots of consistent damage every turn that they cannot escape. Yeah, because sometimes I mean, even by killing you. Because that's the thing is, like, that's an effect that if you use that, you can then sit there as Torterra and just spam curse. Yeah. And just become this unkillable machine. So that whatever just... replaces it has even less chance of bringing you down. Yup. It's, it's kind of great. Yeah. I want to put my big tanky tree boy in S tier. I am going to say no. Okay. And Tell me why you're wrong. <laughs> the reason I say no is because I think what Torterra does is the same as what Sceptile does. 
one thing but really good at it? Yes, with a bit of additional variety, possibly. And actually, I think in terms of like a switching of roles, I think Septile, because of Unburden, has more opportunity to be versatile than Torterra does. I think Torterra has to be a wall. It hasn't really got any, any other way of being. It's a great wall, and it can be used as a wall in lots of circumstances, but it will always be a wall. You take my I, point? So I would say... I, did, I, I, I mean, I agree with you there, because look at that tree. That's clearly glowing out of the floor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you see, you're, you're right. You are yeah. right. Because when we talk about Venusaur, Venusaur's great thing is it can be a wall, or it could be a special sweeper. It can be a complete switch. Yeah. No circumstance. But I th honestly, I think Torterra's design pushes it past Septile. Come on, no. Yeah, they're both great designs. Yes, Torterra is, you know, arguably a better design. But I'm like, I'm not gonna put it in S tier just because it's a slightly better design than Septile. Given Septile could potentially be a better switch than Torterra. Okay, we'll put Torterra in A tier. Yeah, I think it's a really solid A tier, but I don't think it's as good as Venusaur in terms of its versatility. Fair enough, fair enough. There we go. First big argument today. I feel betrayed by my own kin. Well, at least we both know what our opinions are next. Yep, because. Uh... So, you hey, Chris! Trick ponies. Have you ever, you know, and you, you've, li you've lived a life at this point, it was your birthday quite recently, you have lived X many years, and... On God's blue earth. On God's brown earth. On God's shitty fucking earth. On God's <laughs> shitty fucking earth. Um, tell me, as you progressed from an infant to a child, to an adult, to a middle-aged graying man... Uh, yeah. Did you ever lose your arms? Every day. Every day? <laughs> Every then you day. have to be able to sympathize with our next entrant. It is Serperior. The one the one snake who got the raw deal of evolution. Yeah, this is Serperior, this royal looking motherfucker. And I, I mean he's very fabulous. He's very fabulous, and you gotta love that you gotta love that big collar. Like I do love that big collar. That is a collar yeah. you can go hang gliding in. Which is baffles me why Superior is not grass and flying, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Here's the thing. I will show you what Superior evolves from. This is its initial evolution. This smug little, little fucker. This is Snivy. Or Snivy, however you want to pronounce it. It's kinda cute. Smug. It's kind of cute and smug. I have one on top of my computer monitor here, blue tacked to the top of a Blastoise, like it's riding it into battle. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Like, it's a cute little smug asshole, yeah. but it's a smug asshole. And it most notably has arms! Yeah. Arms! So does its evolved form. Yeah, because it then evolves into this boy. This is Servine, who admittedly has slightly less arms. But still, arms! You get and the collar. And thumbs, even. You get in snake. You got, like, leaf thumbs. And then you get... Superior. Who can't scratch his nose anymore. Yeah. So it's a cruel fate. It is a cruel fate. Superior. You gotta, you gotta feel for the itchy nose snake. You gotta feel for the snake whose nose has been itching since it evolved and hasn't found a way to scratch it. Yep. And it's just it's like, a, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a cruel fate. So what we're saying is Superior is living in hell. Yes, it is. And here's the kicker. Superior is bad. <laughs> yes, it is. I swear I had a bigger bombshell for that. The, I had a bigger bombshell and a bigger, like, a better way of saying that. But yeah, Superior is bad. It <sighs> is, again, it's a monotype. Uh, like Septile and Meganium. And like Septile and Meganium, it's kind of set up to be a one-trick pony. 
However, it's one trick. It's one trick. Is a move called Coil. Ain't great. Like, Coil is a good move. It is. It is an objectively good move. Yeah. In that Gen 5 was the first generation to really introduce moves that increased lots of stats. Like, previously, Curse, I think, was the only move. They increased three stats, yeah. Yeah, well, no, it, it didn't. increased one to increase two. Yeah. Dropped speed to increase attack and defense. Yeah, but you still had stuff like Dragon Dance, which increased attra- attack and speed. But that was kind of yeah. it. That, Gen yeah, 5. Coil. Gen yeah, 5, you get shit like Coil, you get Horn Claws. Well, Horn Claws, again, it's attack and accuracy. Coil is the only one that did attack, defense, and accuracy. Yeah. All one stage for free with 20 PP. Yeah, like it's a good move. Yeah. However, <sighs> what's superior stats spread out like? What the um, fucking snake doing? Questionable. Um, in that its highest stat, understandably, for a snake is speed at 113. I'm a leaf on the wind. See me slither. Quite right. Next, uh, jointly, defense and special defense at 95. It's a tank snake. It's a fast tank. Which doesn't make any fucking sense. No, with health attack and special attack all tied at 75. Which is... It's like... And again, it's like... Fast tank only makes sense if your purpose is to have a high base speed to start with and then... And be able to tank enough hits to, to boost your stats. Which like only works if you know that you need to be fast to do your setup. Yeah, which you can, you know, it makes sense if you look at that and you look at coil. Like, it's supposed to use coil on its first turn and use that to juice its attack and survive another, survive a hit and then survive another hit to use it again and then go into hurting people. Except, naturally, it's uh, physical moves, given coil increases physical attack and physical defense. It's physical moves are Leaf Blade and Slam. And Slam, as we've established, is shit. Yup. So, Giga Drain, Leaf Storm, those are out. Yep. Uh, it gets a move called Ring Out, which is a special move in very specific conditions that is good if you pull it off, but equally well, it doesn't it doesn't lend itself to several turns of setup with yep. no strong ability to get your health back. Yep. Um, and actually, um, Superior's TM pool is also pretty shit. Here's it's... the thing. Go on. Superior has had it rough. Yeah. It has one job and it sucks at it. It lost its arms in the divorce. Like, Superior is sitting at the bar crying not because it's drunk because it can't actually drink anything because it can't lift up the fucking glass well here's a caveat to that, John, because just to emphasize how very much superior does its one job badly given that you know realistically it's kind of built around this coil idea yeah. i mean you you can do other things with it but it's not ne- it, it is not necessarily as you know, suited because of the spread of its base stats. Yeah. But bearing in mind that that you know it's be- it's that really great move that boosts three stats. Would you like to know what Superior's hidden ability is? Please tell me it's pranks. Better. It's contrary, isn't it? Yep. Making coil completely useless because contrary oh um contrary invert stat stat changes changes. contrary invert stat changes so it's it's hidden ability makes it worse okay superior needs help please if you know a superior in the energy in your area call the number at the bottom of your screen now because they are probably self-harming Superiors, if superior, if you get a superior with, um, with contrary, 
Hidden Ability Superior, you only have one option. And it's a solid option, because any Pokemon with Contrary generally only has one move that you can use that with. Um, for Superior, that move is Leaf Storm. It drops its special attack. Yeah, so instead what you have is a 130 power attack. Um, that, or a, a move, sorry, special move that, increase, that will increase your special attack when you use it. Which is great! But it makes you even and, more of a one-trick pony. Yes! Although, the nice thing about that is that you're not having to spend time on setup and you've already got, you know, high defense stats and a high speed stat. So mm. it gives thee the option to be a special sweeper. Although, With a bit of bulk. Yeah. And again, it's like, that, that can be handy. And it does mean once you've finished... Once you've used your five leaf storms or your eight, if you P maxed it like you should, then you suddenly have a really high power Giga Drain to get your health back. You know you've got yeah. more options. There. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. The one question I'm asking because this is something that might actually save Superior Defensive what? Superior. Does Superior learn Baton Pass? No. Then, if you do not have a contrary superior, which, by the way, hard to get, yep. your superior is crying and trying not to itself. Yeah. Because it has not Name a lot it. of business doing stuff. Here's the thing, though, and this is gonna, this hurts me to say. I think superior belongs in C tier. I agree. I think it's kind of average at a lot of things. It's It gets not a terrible move pool, is one of the things. You need to invest a lot to get these moves, because by TM's, by TM and na natural learning, because it's not available after Gen 7, um, so it doesn't get that big expanded move pool from Gen 8, um, its move variety is shockingly bad unless you take a lot of time to, you know, breed for eggs. Um, it benefits a lot from the move tutors available in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, um, because that gives it access to things like Aqua Tail, Dragon Pulse, um, Iron Tail, Outrage. Um, so, you know, gives you more flexibility to make it a special attacker or physical attacker. Um, although, as we've established, if you're contrary, you kind of have to go special attack. And if you're not contrary, you kind of have to go physical attack. I mean, it's can it learn hard super fast, power? but it, No, it can't learn super power. So, yeah. uh, and this is the thing, because I've gone and looked into this, because I have always wanted to make teams with Pokemon that have contrary, because I love it as an ability, just in terms of what it does to your opponents. Mm. Um, but... Every, pretty well every Pokemon that has the ability Contrary only gets one move to go with Contrary. Yeah. So for Superior, it's Leaf Storm. For um, Malamar, it's Superpower. Um, That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. So it's... it's yeah. So it's... Yeah. yeah. So no, Superior I, has a trick up its sleeve. Yeah. But... And it's a good trick. But it's, it's, yeah, it's, you kind of have to go one or you have to go the other. And it's not, it's not brilliant. Yeah. Because um, even, you know, even though we're talking about it having a bit of bulk, it's 95. It's bulk is less than Torterra. Yeah, it's bulk is, and especially. Bulk is less than lower, Venusaur. Yeah, especially because it's got a, it's got a lower health base stat as well. It's yeah. just. And Venusaur has the capacity to be. Yes, yes, it does. Um, so, superior, yeah, I feel like superior... I think it goes in C tier. Yeah, I think, yeah, it has the stats of a generalist, aside from the weird defense and speed thing. Yeah. And then the the, the ability and move pool is, is just, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's it, I don't think that the, the yeah. It, I feel the developers were unkind to superior, aside from taking its arms. They're, they're, yeah, they're, Hashtag give Superior its arms back. I, I I would love to see like a mega evolution of Superior where it's just like full Vishnu style, got a thousand arms. Um, that would be amazing. That speaking be of arms, 
we're on to our second bipedal big chunky uh, grass starter with thematically speaking genuinely one of my like favorite trios in terms of its theme we have chestnut I uh, also 10 out of 10 my favorite trio for theming so good. yeah Ch like when they did gen 6 they went hard on so much shit and one of the great things they did was they made the starter trio into actually like three concentric triangles because you have the they standard did. fire water grass triangle you then gave them all secondary type with uh, psychic dark fighting uh, that's the wrong order but um, yeah. as that kind of triangle so it kind of went in reverse and then you made them the classic RPG trio of a fighter, a mage, and a rogue. And Chestnut is our fighter stroke tank. Yup. Which is reflected and in its uh, hidden ability, which is... Bulletproof. It's fucking bulletproof. I'm in sorry, fairness, you can roll up on Chestnut with a couple of tech nines and it will not notice. In fairness, bulletproof is one of those abilities that is good, but situational. It's good, but situational. It's a very good counter to certain Pokemon that shall not be named since, you know, Heracross. <laughs> well, in the, you know, it has a list of moves that it is now immune to because of oh. Bulletproof. Pikachu, thank you for following. Um, oh yeah, thank you. Um, but yeah, so for, and I mean, some of these, you know, pretty solid. To oh, Caitlin, it's you, hi! I just realized it's... that your name is Pink Chaos. How do I fucking not read that? <laughs> Hello, Pink Chaos. Hiya! It is, lovely, it is lovely to see you again. Welcome to our bullshit. Welcome to our spiny bullshit! Yeah! I love my spiky boy! Yeah. He's my big spiky chestnut. No. Hey, Jay, you want, you want to hear something funny? Yeah. So, you know how we hate the Gen 8 starters? Yes, because they suck. They do. You know how... Um, Score Bunny um, becomes Cinderace has unique move that makes it a happy boy. No. It's called Pyro Ball. Do you know who's immune to Pyro Ball? Chestnut. Fuck yes. Fuck yeah, Chestnut will have none of your football sh hooligan shenanigans. <laughs> Quite fucking right. Chestnut has an immunity to David Beckham. Chestnut is, immune, Chestnut is immune to the back of money. Those police sunglasses just fall right his face. Exactly. Chestnut <laughs> is just... I have, I'm not sure what Chestnut is based on. He's kind of a little bit pangolin, and a little bit cactus. He's, but I, I love him. He's big and he's spiky. He's also immune to Victini. What? <laughs> Victini... Um, Victini's kind of like signature move well one of their signature moves um it's called searing shot ah oh. which is also negated by bulletproof fuck yeah <laughs> chestnut is bulletproof which is also reflected in the fact that he has a signature move which is called spiky shield which is a big protect move that hurts people that touch it yes it's great chestnut is the tank's tank absolutely absolute fucking beast. Tell me about its stats, brother. So, um, Chestnut, being one of the rare examples of the grass and fighting type, which is does, not a good typing, does have some problems. Yeah. Which is, namely, a times four weakness to flying, while still having problems with poison types, fire types, psychic types, ice types, and fairy types. Yeah. The, so it yeah. doesn't have a great time that way. And yeah, Chestnut needs the defense. Yeah, and what it does to counter that largely um, special uh, emphasis weakness uh, is to not spec into its special defense at all. It just, it just gives up. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, yeah. Again, you know, talking about things that do one thing well. Chestnut goes 88 health, 107 attack, 122 defense. Ooh! 74 special attack, 75 <laughs> special defense. Yeah. And 64 speed. He's not fast, but he will take a hit to the face. Mostly. Yeah. He will take... No, if you punch a chestnut... 
Oh yeah, if you punch a chestnut, you you break your knuckles. You're going to lose. If you think too hard at a chestnut, it'll die. And interestingly, just, you know, when again, talking about, you know, various things. So chestnut is available in Gen 9, which I what? didn't know. Yeah. What? Chestnut How? Has a gen, gen, chestnut has a Gen 9 move pool. Fucking what? I don't know. Fucking... Maybe it's been announced in the DLC. I don't know. Is the DLC out yet? No. I have no idea. It apparently has a Gen 9 move pool. I, where the f*** do you catch? I don't know. Pokemon oh, Home. To find out. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, so it's transferable. But it means Oh. That Oh, no, it's appeared in Terror Raids, because so is Delphox. Alright, It's go. appeared in Specialist Terror Raids. There you are. Because I, I know there's a Delphox running around at the moment that you can catch. But you can get, like, a rock terror-type chestnut. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but, so chestnut, chestnut's move pool is really interesting. That's what I was kind of going for here. As, you know, because... You know, talking about the fighter archetype, you know, we've got tanks and we've got, you know, like, just hit the wall, you know, ang angie boys. Yeet. So, to back up its its tank credentials, we have Spiky Shield, obviously, which yep. is great. We have Leech Seed, yep. which is very solid, and especially since it doesn't learn any other special attacks aside from Mudshot. Which is stupid. But it's like, yeah, it learns Mudshot, level 41 apparently. For no level reason. Level 41? Yeah, I don't know why. Lose the shot, get the bomb. Yeah, exactly. But it, it's, it's like, it, that's the only venturing into special moves it has. Like, Leech Seed is, it's, you know, like, here we're gonna, we're gonna get some, get some chip damage, get some health back while we, while we block shot, while we block body blows. But what, it, the other, the other, the other things it does, though, bulk up. Good. Good move. Pain split. Oh. So that actually, you know, if you're if you're really kind of like marathoning this, you know, if you've got a chestnut and you're trying to make it really go the distance, you know. Okay. Pain split. I can dig that. Yeah, and that's 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 just its that's just its like tank credentials. On the other end of its Angie Boy punching credentials, punch. early yeah, punch. Uh, you know, hammer arm. Yep. Great wood hammer. Great. It's got two hammers. So if what you have any nails, chest on your boy. I know. Um, seed bomb for grass yep. accuracy. Pin missile when it's up at 25 power. Yes, that's, pin that's now missile. a thing. Giga impact if you really just want to punch and punch some more. If you want to just fucking hit someone. Yep. Body slam for just your average white guy hit someone. And that's all just its normal move. That's not going into extended TM list. So that's the thing is, if Chestnut learns drain punch. That's a good, that's a big good news. Yeah, I can learn Drain Punch. That's big good news. Also, Dragon Claw. I mean, yeah, that fits. Rock Slide. For um, tank credentials, it can learn Spikes. Nice. It can set up entry hazards. Chestnut, Chestnut kind of, despite the angry look on its face, because, you know. Look at my boy, Hiangi. Hiangi. Chestnut kind of really gives me big friendly giant vibes. Like I always feel big friendly giant vibes. I'm like, yeah. like a pangolin. Yeah. Jay. What? Jay. You want to know what Chestnut can learn through breeding? Ancient power. Better. Think. What's what's the what's the one move you want to give the big tanky angie punchy boy? Um. What what gives it the big punch? Close combat? It learns that, but better. 
Fuck, better than close combat? Yeah. Um, For the big punch. Explosion. Belly drum. It learns belly drum? Yep. For those of you who do not know or are not initiated the Pokemon uh, fandom, belly drum is a move that cuts your health in half and then maxes out your attack. And if we've established that we can take the hit, then... Chris, it learns belly drum and drain punch. Yeah. But also, if you don't want to go the belly drum route, it has a second option. Oh my fuck. Curse. It learns curse as well if you want to be more defensive. Yep, and actually you break them both in from Zangoose. Fuck, man. Papa Zangoose, we happy. Yeah. Oh my Christ. Yep. So it's, um, it's, it's, yeah. I was just going to go off on one about Chestnut's vibes and talk about, you know, like Chestnut is the friend who is like, you know, they're a big guy, they're big, they're friendly, you know, lots of hugs. The instant anyone causes any kind of trouble, he will throw them out the fucking window. Yeah. Like That's Chestnut is the guy who is like, he's everybody's best friend and as soon as one of his mates is threatened, snap, somebody's going out that fucking window. Yeah. And it's also, you know, in terms of variety of damage types available. You curse people when you're feeling, you know, normal. Yeah, well, we've got Aerial Ace, we've got um, Metal Claw, Low Sweep, Dig, Bullet Seed, Brick Break, Zen Headbutt. Zen Headbutt! Shadow Claw. Thunder Punch is the one that did it for me. <laughs> Thunder Punch! Yeah, yeah. baby! Oh, and again, Dragon Claw, Rock Slide, Poison Jab, Stomping Tantrum. Stomping Tantrum is a good one. Yep, Iron Head for accuracy. Oh, and shit! Stomping Tantrum! Yeah. Oh my god, it got Stomping Tantrum and it's got Spiky Shield. Yeah. Stomping Tantrum's thing is that it doubles in power... If the previous... The previous move fails. Yeah. Use Spiky Shield twice in a row and then use Stomping Tantrum. If you... Yeah, it's like if you're happy to... If, you, if you're, you're happy to if lose you're a, a double turn, battle and you're happy to lose the turn, your next move will kill what it hits. Yeah, like you're gonna fucking end whatever you find there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's... It's... It's lethal. Damn, man. Like, I, I have always loved Chestnut, and I fully acknowledge that the first Chestnut I ever trained, I ruined, because I gave the worst moves possible. <laughs> like, I oh, completely dear. fucked it. But no, man, Chestnut's great. Yeah, I'm like, that's... For something with... I'll, I mean, it's got a... It's glaring weakness will always be... You know... Types. Low special defense, even lower speed. Yeah, if you thing with air slash, it's gonna keel over. Yeah, it's dead. You know, it'll t- it'll 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 live the first turn because it's got um, spiky shield. So in a double battle, if you've got something that can cover for it, you can make it incredibly dangerous. But if you don't, you know, if you're in single battles. The bird's gonna hurt you. The bird is the word. The word is ow. Yeah, basically. I propose chestnut. I want to say chestnut is A tier because it fit. It very much fits the criteria we've been doing so far. Of oh, it's really good at its thing, yeah. and it's got immaculate vibes. Curse people for breathing too loud. <laughs> curse people when feeling defensive. So much more chaos and curse. Yes, chaos. Curse. Sorry, thank you. I've just seen your, your messages in chat. And I'm You're the one supposed to be moderating this chat. I'm looking at Bulbapedia. Fuck off. Yeah, um, I'm going to go. I would like to propose Chestnut for A tier. I, yeah. Based on the I, credentials we have. But I think, yeah, I think it does. It's like if it weren't for that. Times four weakness and the and yeah. the and the special defense and speed thing. I you know I'm like yeah I yeah I put it up with those two. That's the thing is I when you compare Chestnut to Septile. Yeah, it's Septile will probably kill it. Septile might kill it. But it's yeah I think they both do versatile switches. Set 
tell because of its ability, its hidden ability, and chestnut just from its just general stat options. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, chestnut. Although I think better at being able to do the two things. That that weakness is glaring. Yeah, it's not what you want in a tank. No. So, speaking of glaring, let's get back to when grass types were edgy. <laughs> because it is our merriest of men. Uh, our Robin Hood. Our Robin Hoodie. It is Decidui. Love the, I love this burb. I love, I love this burb. burb so I love much. that burb! And I partly love it because it's two previous evolutions are garbage. <laughs> They're real cute garbage. They're real cute, but... Garbage. Yes, okay, fine, they're garbage, but they're adorable garbage. They are. Oh, they are. Like, okay, we gotta see this. Decidueye, as you can see, is an edgy boy in a hoodie. He literally has the drawstrings for his hoodie. Yeah. He evolves from what is essentially an owl fuckboy. I... <laughs> Trix is an owl fuckboy, okay? I, I, I mean, incel. <laughs> True. And then there is Rowlet, who is a who little is... boy who's just gone to his first communion. And his little bow tie. That's a little owl with a bow tie. How can you not love that? That's so cute. It is adorable. Like that. Owl turns into the true hoodie. It's, it's, yeah, as yeah, as much as much OMG. Yeah. I mean, and yes, we would all die for this burb with the cape. We one hundred percent would die for the burb with the cape. Yeah, because here's the thing: is, it's it may be a bird, but it's dead inside because it is a grass and ghost type. It's in fact. Yeah. It incelled so hard it died inside. It, no, this is this has like yeah. it has experienced oh, ego death. It has gone so far through incel that it has experienced ego death and come back around to being a decent person who listens to just a bit too much placebo. And probably read Nietzsche when they were slightly too young. Probably yeah. It's like they're not a cunt anymore. <laughs> they're just kind of edgy. Yeah. Uh it's it's yeah, it's 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 delightful and I love it. I love Grass Ghost as a typing. Um like, I do. It's just it's it's just great fun whilst also being, you know, not particularly like in terms of stats, you know, we're gonna go by the numbers. It's not particularly great, it's not particularly bad, it's kinda just okay. That's true. But I just love it. I love it. It it's it, it... Design-wise, it's fantastic. Uh, I will say one thing, though. There are, to my knowledge, four grass and ghost types. Yes. And the other three are underwhelming as shit. I, I like Trevenant. I like Trevenant. I like Trevenant. It's underwhelming. Fair. As is Pump Cool, as is Bramblegast. I mean, I would like to make a competitive Bramblegast. I, I, I am interested, but at the moment I kind of like, eh. Fair. Like, I'd, be t I'd be curious to see what you could do with it, but for the most part Bramblegast just kind of makes me go, that's a bunch of twigs that got haunted. I kind of love that though for its design philosophy, I'm not gonna lie. Fair. But it is, it, I, I don't like the fact that it's one of those Pokemon that it just evolves by getting bigger. Fair, fair. Bigger and angrier. Yeah. Whereas the Sidui, that's a whole ass owl with a Robin Hood theme, which is why yes. I made those Robin Hoodie jokes. Yeah. And it learns some badass ghost moves. Yeah. It gets what's its what's uh Decidueye's hidden ability, bro? So this is where you this is where the hype train kinda of dies a little bit. Yeah. So it's hidden ability and the hidden ability introduced for it is brand new and it's unique or at the time was brand new, is unique to um Rowlet's Rowlet's um Evolutionary, evolutionary line, line. Uh, and the ability is called long reach and it's very situational if the pokemon uses a contact move it will not activate any effects caused by contact which is useful 
but, but situational. Kind of situational. Like you're it's one of those things that's better to have and not need than need and not have. Yeah. But yeah. equally well it's like if you were trying to I I would you would be hard pressed, I think, to find you know, a competitive team where somebody built something specifically with long range. Yeah, because the only thing competitively that you would really have that would be it's sub like, be circumnavigated yeah. by long reach would be something like a ferrothorn where it's got iron spikes and rocket yeah. and it it's it purely yeah purely meant to circumvent that which yeah. you could do just by using special moves yeah because that's the thing when in doubt flamethrower yes uh, good advice <laughs> for so life by the way hmm? good advice for life by the way yeah absolutely if in when doubt, doubt flamethrower flame something Flam and Verfer is the answer to most problems. The cops can't catch you if you burn all the evidence. And, the and all the cops. We're going to get in trouble. Um, <laughs> this does not constitute legal advice. I am not a, I am not a quali- the brothers. Neither of the brothers, honey, are qualified legal advisors. Therefore, this does not count as legal advice. I'd Set like fire to cops. Out, Jay, that we also, we have 17 minutes left and two more to do after this. Fuck. So, so Decidui. Let's, middling let's stats. Do the nit- let's do the nitty gritty, which is that Decidui is interesting. We got 107 attack, 100 special attack, so with that kind of versatility there, you can choose how you want to build it. 100 special defense, 75 defense, 70 health and speed. Okay. It's it's a little strange. Um, yeah. Now, Decidueye, obviously being... So one of the nice things about Gen 7 was Gen 7 was the first generation really to... In, well, no, no, the previous generation was. But this is this was the first generation, I think, to like really hardcore go in on each starter having a unique move. Previous generation yeah. had it, but they kind of were a little a little less whelming, I guess. Whereas this was like, nah, this is big hardcore, and also it goes with the mechanic, the, the fancy mechanic that they invented for Gen 7. Yeah. Which we're not going to go into. Because Basically, are you can make thing. one move go boom. Yeah, big boom. Big boom. With cool animations. Absolutely. Um, so Decidueyes is called Spirit Shackle, which is... Uh, Old ghosty move. Um, spirit shackle inflicts damage and prevents the target from fleeing. Literally, you shackle someone's spirit to the field so they cannot escape from you. It's metal as fuck. There is no escape from the hoodie bird. From the hoodie bird, in fact. He will put his, he will shoot you, and he will put his earpods in your ears and play you his music. There is no escape. Yeah. So it's it's yeah it's a school <coughs> AF. Like, Decidueye is a very solid all-rounder. Yeah. <clears throat> well, not so much in terms of the defensive. Like, it can do special offensing, and it can do a lot of offense. Um, it's got but, a really cool design. Yes. I am going to put to you, however, that despite its really cool design and its flexibility of build, that it is not a tier. It does not have a thing. No, it I think, doesn't. I think the Sidui is B tier. And it's it's interesting because its move is very physical heavy. And yeah, by well, that I mean it has one special move, which is Leaf Storm. Because it had to learn, it has to learn Leaf Storm. Yeah, everything else is and admittedly good, you know, Brave Bird, Leaf Blade, Sucker Punch, Phantom Force, Spirit Shackle. You know, good shit in there. That's yeah, that's just some good shit in there. Um, it it had. We're on a Gen Nine move pool again. Um, I think yes, again, it'll have been a terror raid thing. It will have been a terror raid thing, but that means you know it's got a big expanded move pool, which is not particularly welling actually. Now that I look at it again. Grass, bug, ghost, yes. normal. I argue that I will say the same. I think the said UI should probably go in B tier. Cause it's not quite as much of a fuck up as Superior. Yeah. But it's yeah, it, it doesn't 
it's 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 okay across the board. I feel like it doesn't do anything particularly well. Yeah. However, and this is well, this isn't really a however, this is a sidebar, brief sidebar, because we haven't got lots of time. Um, and I know you didn't want to bring up Legends Arceus and Hiswian forms. And we're not gonna rank it separately or anything, but Hiswian Decidui, just so we're clear, hidden ability scrappy. Yeah. Which is pretty solid. For a fighting type, yes. Yeah. So, you know. I mean, that's what Decidueye would look like if it wasn't dead inside. Yeah. So, I'm gonna... I'm putting Decidueye in B tier. Fair. Because it, does, it doesn't have quite the, the awesomeness to stack up to any of the A tiers, but it does perform better at its tasks than Superior, which is risky, and Meganium, which is kind of flat. Yeah. So, next we have, um, Ringo wasn't a good drummer there, I said it, it's Rillaboom. <laughs> Did you know, th this is, this is, this is a true fact. Did you know that Rillaboom that touches kids? <laughs> that is a true fact, yes. That's a very um, true fact. It is a very true fact. Did you know that Ringo Starr, um, managed to beat... Paul McCartney and John Lennon in the charts at once. Ha! <laughs> nice. It's like, this is a real thing. Like, after the Beatles all went their separate way, there was like a solid, like, two, three, four, or five years of Ringo Mania, where he legit outsold all of the other Beatles. Nice. For like anyway. two whole albums. It was, it was mental. This is Rillaboom. He's a disappointment. Because as any as anyone who has ever, you know, been attracted to musicians will ever tell you, don't date the drummer. Okay? They're very noisy. They're very noisy, and yeah, they'll have a great rhythm, but frankly, they'll just end up tapping up and down your spine and you'll lose everything. Okay? Rillaboom is legitimately we, Chris and I have spent an entire stream once complaining about Gen 8, so I will just reiterate this one particular fact. Generation 8, where Rillaboom is from. Uh, I trained a Rillaboom. It is the first time that I have ever willingly just given up my starter Pokemon for adoption uh, as part of a story team. I mean, I left I thought... this fucking monkey in a basket on a doorstep. But also, let's talk more about, like, you know, tangible reasons why it's shite. Let's talk about tangible reasons why it's shite, okay? Again, yeah, let's, it's a let's... monotype. What's its hidden ability? <laughs> Has a hidden... If, it, if it's soundproof, I will swear. If it's sound... Soundproof proof would be good, actually. Soundproof would be, like, thematic. I would soundproof be very... would be thematic, but also would prove that it's fucking bone deaf. This is also true. Um, no, it is considered less cool than that. Well, uh, it? Rillaboom borrows the hidden the, the signature ability of previous generation Tapu Bulu, which is an ability called Grassy Surge. Oh, it fucking summons grass terrain when it enters the battle. When it enters the fields. Yeah, because that's because that's where we know that all drummers live, right? Okay, any drummer any which this is clearly designed to be a rock and roll drummer. I'm not talking about like a hippie drum circle. We're talking like a rock and roll sex pistol style drummer. That this is clearly meant to be, we all know they live outside and perform gigs in parks rather than, you know, usually in grimy pub basements. I mean, tea in the park, but that's not a thing anymore. No, it isn't. Um, yeah, so it's, and gra you know, again, mechanically, Grassy Surge, not a, not, it's not, not grass, a step, It just means not... that everybody around you is restoring health and you really need a way to mitigate that from your opponent. Yeah. To make it work it's... for you, it's like it takes a bit of work to get it going. Yeah. So it's and Rillaboom doesn't have that. No. I'm not gonna lie. Let's let's break down the stats. So let's break his fucking nose and be on and be done with it. In Rillaboom's favor, alright, and this is not to be sneezed at, alright? Yeah, I know that Rillaboom had some competitive relevancy. Absolutely, because he's got a hundred base health. Which is good. Highest so far. It, it is the highest so far. At 125 base attack. Yeah, no, like, it, it did hit hard. Yep. Um, 
60 special attack, so, you know, we're not bothering with that. 90 defense, 70 special defense, 85 speed. All kind of middling, you know, can yeah. do. It, so that's a it's really quite good attack stat. It's an excellent attack stat. Here's our problem with our excellent attack stat. Um, Rillaboom's move pool. So, it has its unique move, which is called Drum Beating. Which, let's just have a quick look at it. Um, inflict damage and lowers the target's speed by one stage. Which is good, because you've got a kind of middling speed stat, so that's handy. Um, you know, and it's 80 power, which is, again, not to be sneezed at. This is a good, solid move. Your other moves, however, are Wood Hammer, which is good. Boom Burst. Which really which doesn't is, take a... Yeah, which is a special move. We've established that the special stat on Rillaboom is shite. But it does and make it, sense. It does. It can, thematically, it makes sense. Mechanically, it's deeply unsound, which yeah. is a good pun. Um, and uproar, which again is a special move, high power special move. Which it doesn't get. Here's the thing, though. And I'm gonna. Rillaboom should have been part normal. Why? Every single sound-based Pokemon is normal type or was normal type at one point uh ex exception to that rule is exceptions Neuvern. to that rule are Noivern and Chimeco fair but the rest of them yeah no generally yeah generally and all and basically every sound based move night most sound based moves are normal type well boom burst being the most powerful hyper voice being a or boom burst hyper voice screech uproar yep no, you're, you, you are quite right. Like his bikini top. Yeah. This is a rock and roll drummer in a bikini top. Oh, so he is! <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. His, his, his little nips are very cold. <laughs> uh, yeah. Make your mind up. Are you the Sex Pistols or are you the Beach Boys? Make your fucking mind up, yo. As he's really not sure. Um, right, okay. Wider move pool. Um, from from egg moves, fake out growth, hammer arm, leech seed, strength, worry seed. Leech seed leech is seed, good. Leech seed and hammer arm, yes. Yeah, fake out maybe, but not really necessarily, unless you kind of really built around it. Uh, again, though, Gen what? Nine moves, so expanded TM pool, which includes low kick, acrobatics. Uh, bulldoze, low sweep, um, brick break U-turn. A lot of fighting moves in here. Seed bomb, drain punch, stomping tantrum. So having ground moves is good for it. But I guess, yes, fighting moves, ground moves. One bug move. That's kind of it. Yeah. Like... So it's not, yeah, again, it's not stellar. Acrobatics is pretty cool. But it... Acrobatics is all right. Uh, doesn't make any sense, but... No. And doesn't necessarily get to make use of it, but it's cool. Um, it has a... What's this? A wee 40 power um, unique move called Branch Palm, which is stupid. What? I think it's probably inherited <laughs> from Wacky. So, yeah. Branch Palm, uh, damage dealing grass move introduced in Gen 8. Um, it's the signature move of Grookey, and the own it's it's just forty power, hundred accuracy. That's all it is. Forty power, hundred accuracy. Physical it leafage. Move. It's leafage, but they needed to make him feel special because he felt bullied. I guess. Fuck off! They're just pandering to this crappy monkey. Yeah, that is straight up pandering. That is A grade. We're gonna take something that already exists, give it a brand new name, just for you. But it does do literally the same thing as the other thing does. Can we stick? Don't tell anybody. Can we just stick him in E tier and be done with this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Rillaboom. I would argue, yeah, I would argue Rillaboom is less good at doing the things that it does than Meganium is. Yeah. Because its move pool is even less tailored to its stats. You you go over here. You don't, you don't get to go near everybody. You, you stay over there in the fucking corner. Yeah. <laughs> fucking Sag Monkey. Yeah. And for my next trick, we will move on and produce our final contestants. It is the new, the wonderful, the magical, the mystical Meowscarada. Here we go. Look at that motherfucker. And they fancy. That is a fancy boy. Look at that fancy! That is a fancy stage magician motherfucker. That is some flair. That is pizzazz. That is, please just sit down and stop playing card tricks with the waiter. Now, I have to say that much as I love Meowscarada, I have one very distinct issue with it, just from a moral standpoint. You mean the fact that it's furry bait? No, I have no... I'm a, Jay, yep. I've been in the Pokemon fandom too long to care about furry bait. We will get to Grenada and I will voice my problems. Well, this is the thing though. My issue with Meowscarada is the same one I have with Greninja. Which is that... And it does occur sometimes that the devs have a favorite. Yes. And you can tell that favorite because Meowscarada and Greninja, who are both notably the favorites of the devs of that gen, because they get all the best shit. Yep. Including both of them having the same hidden ability. To be fair, they nerfed Protean in the in this generation. How did they nerf Protean? It only triggers once, I think. Let me have a look at this. Because Protean no longer triggers every time. Generation 9, Protean only activates once per switch. If the user terrest terrestrializes, the effect of Protean will, protein will be nullified. Yeah. So they, okay. basically turned, they basically turned Protean into terrestrialization, but less. Okay. Because to be fair, Protean was busted. Oh, it was incredibly busted. It was an insane ability that you just could not deal with. So, for the viewers at home, Protean was an ability which changed your type to be the same type as whatever move you were using. Yeah. And only two Pokemon ever had it before. Yes. Greninja and Kecleon. Yeah. And the advantage of that is that basically... So Pokemon it also sucked got, on Kecleon. It Kecleon, did. Because Kecleon's yeah. best move is Synchronoid. It's best if you match up with the opponent's type. Yeah, it's it's difficult. It's Which is more likely to happen with color change. Yes. Um, yeah, it basically boosted the power of literally any move you made and made it almost impossible for your opponent to know what your weakness was because it would yeah. change every turn. Yeah, it's good shit. Yeah, it's it's yeah, br it's bitching. One thing um, I will say. What? Uh, despite the fact that Miascarada is. Yes, quite obviously, the, the dev's favourite, both through the existence of Protean and its exclusive move, Flower Trick, which yep. never misses and always crits, because yep. what the fuck? Meowscarada is not my favourite design of the Gen 9 starters. Is it Quack? Is it it's the... absolutely Quackwaval, because yeah. Quackwaval is amazing. I have not trained, it's the only one I haven't trained. But fuck yeah. me, Quackwaval is so brilliant in his it's design. It's so cool. I love it's it. It's so fucking cool. I love Quackwaval. It's amazing. Right. Like, yeah. But let's let's talk about Meowscarada. Yeah, let's talk about Meowscarada. Meowscarada is fast, strong, and will fuck your day up with both its power and its variety of moves. Because I believe my new Flower Trick Play Rough Night Slash and U-turn. Yes, is the answer to that. Um, and it has, and it has a whole bunch more exciting shit that it can learn. Yeah. Oh, it does in a, in the expanded TM list. Yeah, like um, Meowscarada gets a lot of shit. Yeah. And also, it's got a, sucker punch as a as an egg move. Well, it's got a really good grass dark typing, which is also pretty rare. It is very rare. Um, one other Pokemon. Shift try. Yeah, that's it. And Cacturn. Cacturn. Forgot about Cacturn. 
However, I forget my gag turn. Grass and Dark has a real big problem. Massive bug weakness. And six additional. Se it's got seven weaknesses. Fighting, flying, poison, bug, fire, ice, and fairy. Fuck, man. But six resistances and as six resistances and an immunity. Yeah, because you get that immunity to psychic. Yeah, and actually, again, with me Escarada, it's not trying to tank a hit. It has really 76 not. health, 70 defense, and 70 special defense. It's not horribly low, but it wasn't going to get any lower. Yeah, what it Escarada. does have, yeah, what it does have though is 123 base speed and 110 attack. Yeah, Miascarada is your perfect, like, fast physical sweeper. Yeah, and I am so happy that I also managed a fun little strategy. I managed to turn it into an absolute crying bitch. I managed to turn this into the wimpy helper Pokemon. Oh yeah! Which yeah. Was, which was kind of hilarious. That's kind of funny. It but was. in terms of its vibes, like, Meowskarana is, it's tricksy, it's playful, it's fun. Like this would be a fun guy to meet at a party, but like if you talk to him for more than 20 minutes, he's gonna start bringing up some conspiracy theories. I just think he's more like, I think he's more like, um, is this uh, your cat? I was gonna go, um, and is it Phantom Mask from, um, Sailor Moon? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's, that's who this is. Yeah. This is, um, oh. Rose Mask or Phantom Rose or whatever. The yeah. fucking mask dude in the top hat from Sailor Moon. Yeah, uh, that's, that's who this is. A little bit, yeah, more than a little. I, yeah. I, God, it's just... That smug expression on its face, it's yeah. just like... But it's just like... Meowskarada, you know. stop playing, is this your credit card? Just pay the fucking... Pay your quarter of the fucking dinner bill and so we can go home. And then, it ki and then they kill the waiter. And then they fucking murder the waiter because this thing is a, secretly an unstoppable death machine. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about that because you know you already established, you know it's flower trick, it's unique move, seventy power never misses, um, and always. also raises its speed. I think. No, it always crits. It doesn't raise its speed. It just always crits. It always crits. Always crits. It inflates damage and bypasses accuracy. Always hits unless target is semi invulnerable, and will always result in a critical hit. Yeah. That is disgusting. Yeah. That Considering how the other two, we have Skellidurge's Torch Song, which just raises its special attack, which is good. But no, and Quackleval's Aqua Step, which I believe raises its own speed. It does, yes. But that's all either of them do. They don't have two special things about them. No. It's flower trick. Oh, that's, that's grotesque. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. And it is, how, it is how I managed to bitch slap my way through basically 90% of my problems in, in Scarlet. It was me Escarada with Flower Trick so that it was attacking with double and then double and then one and a half times on top of that in terms of its damage. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Because what the fuck? So it was essentially attacking with 210 power before anything else is taken. For Flower Trick. Okay. That couldn't fucking miss! It's more powerful than self-destruct. Yes. That's nearly that. as powerful as explosion. That's that's grotesque. That's yeah, it's horrific. And yeah, so that and that's gross in itself. It's also got Seed Bomb, U-turn, yeah. slash night slash, play rough, yep. knock off for some reason. Knock off's um, handy. Yeah, but then we go into the expanded TM list and you're looking at acrobatics, you're looking at trailblaze if you wanted to boost its speed, aerial ace, low sweep, brick break, shadow claw, foul play if you wanted to be a real dick, thunder punch. Christ. Um, I think that was foul play. Yeah. It's like, no, only I can have the most attack. Yeah, apparently giga impact wanted to just like one shot one Christ, kill. this is the angel of death and it's a cat yep sucker punch from egg if it was like well maybe i didn't go first enough jesus christ so it's 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 solid 
I think this is the very definition of like glass cannon does one thing very well, but will die if it doesn't kill you first. Here's the great thing though. It learns shit like U-turn. Yeah, so it's, it can run away. So that's the thing is if, it'll hit, if it hits first with U-turn, you could just hit it, hit something really hard and bounce into your defense. Yeah, with somebody else. So that means that whatever someone like, someone comes at you with a big bug move, and then suddenly they're confronted with a nice chunky Torkoal or something. Yeah. It's just, just, yeah, it's, it's good. I I would say it's a solid A tier. Yeah, I would put, like, Meowskarada belongs in A tier. It is not, it doesn't, again, it is still a one-trick pony, but that trick is got all that razzle-dazzle. And it's immensely, like, it's better at what it does than Sceptile or Chestnut is at what they do. Although Sceptile Sept and Chestnut can both do more than one thing. Yeah. But it doesn't quite have the level of disgusting yeah. universality that yeah. comes with Venusaur. Yes. I would, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I very much stick by the list that we've got at the moment. Rillaboom's the worst, Venusaur's the best. Case closed. That ah! is the unspeakable, accurate, definitive truth that is our opinion. Um, Jonathan, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at home. I live in a place. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at JonathanHoney4. You can follow my company, uh, Old Alliance Games. I make video games. Uh, at Alt underscore games. Uh, we've got hopefully some very exciting news coming at the end of the month. Ooh. Very, uh, very, very fun stuff. You can uh, read my reviews of various video games uh, as well as find some of my own little personal work and my own stories. Uh, on jonathandavidhoney.com uh, all of this is like linked in the uh, Twitch bio and in the YouTube description if you're watching this later uh, you can also support me on Patreon if you have too much money and, not, and no idea what to do with it uh, and you can find Chris on Instagram at chrishoneyactor and, and I am also hoping to do some slightly more interesting things towards the end of the year well we'll see we'll see how we'll see how life goes you can find us here every Monday night at 8 o'clock. And if you're on YouTube, you can find us at The Brothers Honey on YouTube. Please subscribe so you can see these later if you miss them. I think that was a pretty solid. Did we cover all bases? I think we covered all bases at least once. At least once. Okay. At least once. You only need to cover it once. That's fine. You only need to cover it once. All right. Well, that's 10 past 10. That's Can 10 we... past 10. We're just Thank past you. it, everybody. Thank you, uh, Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Um, for listening to us rant about grass. We're going to be doing the other two starters over the next couple of weeks. And then, who knows? Very we might do some really, things. really fun stuff. Exciting secret things are coming. Exciting secret things. We have plans. Yes! Somehow Hell we yeah. a plan. Okay. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye!